Hey everyone, welcome to this video, this is Pazarin and today we are building again in The Sims 4. So many of us enjoy building The Sims but every now and then we struggle with our interiors. Maybe at one point you took forever to pick a swatch for a bed or you're stuck choosing between 5 different sofas for your living room and you still couldn't make a decision. Plus, you've already used every single pack you owned and every piece of decor in the catalog but your room still kind of feels like it's missing something. Believe me, I've been there too. So yeah, building interiors in The Sims can be quite challenging, especially if you're new to it, and a lot of us just want to improve in building in general. After all, a lot of our Sims spend a lot of time indoors, and who doesn't want to have a nice looking kitchen? Which is why today, I will be sharing with you my 15 tips for designing and decorating interiors in The Sims 4 like a pro. So some of these are just interior design fundamentals that I thought would be very relevant in The Sims, and hopefully these will help you become a better builder. So without further ado, let's begin. Number one is to look for inspiration. First things first, do your research. Whether you're a new builder or someone who's experiencing a bit of a builder's block, take a moment to do a little bit of research. Check out what's trendy in home magazines or visit that new cafe or library in your town. Or you can always just browse Pinterest. Gather some ideas and take the time to pick your colors, textures, and theme. It also helps to create a mood board of different elements that you want to see and combine these to create something of your own. These help a lot when you're full of ideas and just need a way of organizing them. Here's one that I made combining photos I found on Pinterest. And here's the interior I built it in The Sims using ideas from that mood board. Believe it or not, even professional designers still take the time to browse catalogs or do their research and make use of references. It's natural to follow what's trendy as long as you share what inspired you and of course don't forget to give credit where credit is due. Number 2 is plan ahead the floor plan. It's best to plan ahead when you start building initially, and if you're the type to plan your rooms upon completion of the exterior, planning is still important and understanding room function still helps you avoid building too large or too small. It will help you decide where the kitchen and stairs would be, how many bathrooms and bedrooms you will need, or if there is a need for rooms dedicated for hobbies, etc. You can map it out on paper, and if you're having trouble, look up actual floor plans and study them. You can also use those as references. It also helps to understand the function of each room so you'll know where to place them. Some rooms also go together like the kitchen and dining room, so it's a lot easier to plan those out. I did a full video tutorial on floor plans so you can check it out if you want to learn how to make your own guide with spreadsheets. Link is in the description. Number 3 is to use cheats. It's no secret that cheats help you make more unique looking builds and there is absolutely nothing wrong with using cheats when you build in The Sims. Literally everyone does it. All you have to do is to type Ctrl Shift C on your keyboard, type testing cheats enabled true, then type your desired cheats. The move objects cheat is very versatile and allows you to move your objects outside of the usual grid and these can overlap over other objects. The show hidden objects and show live edited objects cheats allow you to use debugs and live objects found in different worlds and many of these can be used as decor without being tagged as CC. If you're worried about these objects getting in your sims way, do some playtesting while you build. Go create something unique and have fun with it. Number 4. Note the placements of windows and doors. If you've already completed the exterior or you're working with an apartment lot from city living or eco lifestyle, Plan your room assignments according to the placement of the windows. Try to determine which rooms need more light and which ones do not necessarily need them. Think of your sims needing their version of privacy and make adjustments whenever needed. After building your interior walls, place your doors where they are most convenient to enter, like a bedroom being accessed through the general area like a hallway or the living room. This will determine the flow of your rooms based on your floor plan as well. Number 5. Function first, aesthetics later. Having trouble with a room's layout? Think of the most important pieces of furniture in a room and place them first before adding any decor whatsoever. Start with fixed or built-in objects like staircases, kitchen counters, fireplaces, toilets, etc. These will also help with your space planning based on where you place these objects. Next, to save time and because you're still having trouble deciding on which furniture pieces to use in a room, add some placeholders in the meantime. Placeholders are just temporary pieces of furniture used for layout purposes. For example, I chose a random sofa along with some chairs and some tables to experiment with the layout of my living room. 
Adding placeholders is helpful in gauging whether certain furniture will fit your space because some tend to need more room than others. Of course, when you're satisfied with the positions of your placeholder furniture, you can always change them into the models you decide you actually want to use. Once you're happy with the layout of your larger and more important pieces, that's when you start adding some decor. Number six is to give importance to movement and circulation. Your sims like to move around, so space is important. Make sure your room layout is free-flowing and without dead ends. There is no need to separate every room with a wall to remove unnecessary barriers and obstructions. For more realistic looking builds, have at least a 2x2 two two tile clearance in front of staircase landings, top and bottom, and in front of entrances and exits as well. Sometimes open areas are good because it allows for more movement in the space, although if you are doing a more traditional house, I understand the rooms tend to have more clutter. Nevertheless, having good circulation tend to make even a small room feel wider and more realistic. Remember, less can be more. So if you're trying to make a room look bigger, think about toning down the number of objects you place in the room just a little bit. And speaking of minimizing barriers like walls, number seven is to make use of columns, beams, half walls, and platforms. So you want to divide a room, but adding another wall or divider doesn't look that great and the space is already looking too cramped? Make something unique by using columns and beams to create an archway or even an arcade. Half walls also do a good job of separating space, and sometimes I like adding windows to create a whole new divider. Need more room dividing ideas? How about changing the floor levels by raising your platform to separate rooms and for more variety? Number 8 is to choose packs with objects that have matching characteristics. You have all these build and buy items in your catalog from all of these packs that you own, but you're still having a hard time choosing your furniture. You can try filtering out the build and buy through styles, which is found at the bottom right of your screen in build mode. The game will automatically sort out which pieces of furniture and decor will fit a certain style. If you want to filter through packs, some DLCs just go well with others and you'd be surprised to see many of them have objects and swatches that just work together. Like Snow Escape and Eco Lifestyle for a more modern style and Get Together alongside Cottage Living for European provincial styles. You can place objects from these packs side by side to see if they share some similarities like colors and textures. As for base game exclusive players, no packs, no problem. The base game has many different pieces of furniture that match, making it simple for you to decide on which furniture to use based on the type of house you build. As usual, just filter out the styles and get creative. And also, don't forget to access your show hidden objects and show live edit objects cheats to get even more bonus decor items. Number 9 is to establish a focal point per room. A focal point is basically the most dominant object or element of the room and it is usually the first object that you see upon entering. This will be super useful when you're already taking photos of your interiors and kind of helps answer the what is still missing in my space question that seems to haunt a lot of us. So to establish a focal point, choose an object that has the most contrasting or vibrant color. You can also create a focal point by painting one entire wall a darker or more vibrant accent color while the rest remain light or vice versa. A focal point can also be a large object like a grand piano or a built-in media center, a bed, a staircase, or the fireplace as long as it generates some form of interest. Place it in an area where it stands out from the rest of the room and you will immediately notice an improvement with the look of your space. Accent pieces and colors generally help make the space more interesting. And speaking of colors, number 10 is to choose a color palette and apply it using the 60-30-10 rule. Colors are important and they help make a room look more interesting. You can never go wrong with a neutral color scheme, but a pop of color adds character. You can always refer to a color wheel as a guide if you want to know which colors go together based on certain color schemes. Some colors evoke an emotional response and certain color combinations work better than others. There are plenty of color combinations and you can always pair and group multiple hues together. Here are just some of the basic color combinations based on the color wheel and adding neutral colors like your browns, blacks, beiges, grays, and whites help balance them out even more. So if you find yourself struggling with color application in your build, the 60-30-10 rule is the simplest way in deciding on the perfect color palette. All you need are three colors. So the 60-30-10 rule basically goes that 60% of the rule is the dominant color, usually a neutral shade like beige or white, 
30% is covered by the secondary color, usually through textures like wood tones, and 10% is the accent hue, which comes in minimal amounts. You can go crazy with your accent because by the time you establish your 60 and 30, your 10% accent hue just adds a little bit more character to your room. And there you have it! Your room looks better already thanks to color. Number 11. Note the scales and proportions. Proportion is the relative size of an object compared to the other objects and elements within space. You may notice that some objects in game appear to be a lot bigger compared to their real life counterparts, especially older clutter items. Resizing by using the bracket keys helps make them more realistically their size. In order to figure out if an object is too big or too little, place them beside your sim. If they appear too big for your sim to even hold them, feel free to resize them to look a little bit smaller. You can also decide to make them bigger to match the size of the room. For example, I resize these smaller chandeliers to bigger ones so that they will look nicer and appear more proportionate to the size of the big room. You can also make a lot of fun and interesting objects through resizing, and it's super easy and can overall improve the look of your space. Number 12 is to use gallery art. Simply put, gallery art are paintings that you can download from the gallery. These are created by certain creators in-game, and because the base game has canvases and painting as a skill, they're basically base game objects not flagged as CC. So you can use them on all of your builds even if you just own the base game. I personally love using them for custom cabinets, murals, custom paintings, frame photos, and kitchen backsplash tiles. In order to find gallery art, type gallery art in your gallery search bar and filter it to rooms. There are numerous creators who make gallery art for free and upload them to the gallery, and you can directly search for them within the creator's profiles. Serena Sims, Najo Pao, Sim Lusky, Fruit Loops 40, Simsational 2, and Katatron 16 are among the many creators I download gallery art from. Number 13 is to play with lighting. Different colored lights can really spice up your build and set the mood. To change the color of your lights, right click the light in live mode and choose the colors you desire. Warmer tones tend to make the space feel more intimate, and cooler tones are great for rooms where a lot of work happens. You can utterly transform a room by changing the color of the lights alone, just like this dark bar where everything is painted in black. Experimenting with different colors for the lights seems to really transform the whole space. I also like balancing these lights out by adding a few neutral tones when needed, and you can always adjust the intensity of your lights if you want a softer glow. Number 14 is to use objects made by other users in the gallery. Mods in CC are great, though I am very much aware that not everyone can use them. So it's amazing how some creators like making custom-made CC-free objects and uploading them to the gallery. Some of them were created using mods, but you don't need mods at all to download them. As an example, check out this object made by Sadie Sims. She made these using cats and dogs and get-together items. It's super cool. Just filter the gallery by rooms to make it easier for you to browse their custom furniture creations. Don't forget to turn on your move objects cheat so the objects remain intact when you download and place them directly on your build. And last but not the least, number 15 is to learn from others. There are a ton of tutorials out there that include build hacks in creating more interesting objects in the game, and they can be found all over YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Whenever I run out of ideas and I feel like creating some more interesting objects, I tend to look for tutorials and gather some inspiration. Some of my favorite creators that upload tutorials on their channels and socials are Kate Emerald, Maya Shmaya, Maya Makes, Serena Sims, and Simstopia. Here's a desk trick I learned from Simstopia after watching their video. Pretty cool! I will leave a link to all the profiles of these creators that I mentioned throughout this video. So those are my 15 tips to help you build better interiors in The Sims. As mentioned, a lot of these are just interior design fundamentals and they've always been helpful to me, but sadly, they tend to get overlooked. I know this is just a Sims and not real life design, but if you think about it, The Sims is a life simulation game where you visualize actual people living in an actual house, so these tips can apply one way or another. Let me know what you guys think of the video, and if you have any tips to share of your own, feel free to comment them down below so that we can help each other out. If you enjoyed this video, please do not forget to leave a like and also subscribe for more Sims 4 content. I do want to make more videos like this and it really really helps to get that kind of support. 
Also, check out my socials for more of my Sims 4 builds. And if you're feeling generous, please consider buying me a Kofi on my Kofi page. It's thanks to you guys that I was able to um, upgrade on my equipment. Look, I have a mic arm now, thanks to you. I put a lot of love into making these videos, so I hope you guys enjoy this one. I really appreciate all the love and support. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Happy building! Thank you.